Notice the, the description that we find here in U.S. News and World Report. Uh, Alan uh, Collada and his colleagues, University of Chicago, reproduced the irrigation technology practiced 1,500 years ago by the Tiwanaka people in test plots near day, uh, modern day Bolivia's Lake Titicaca. The resulting bumper crops in some cases seven times the average yield of the land farmed using modern techniques. Now we think we know how to do things in a modern way today, but when he reproduced uh, what these dummies did, <laughs> he got seven times the produce than our modern techniques. They found if by osmosis they absorbed the water from beneath rather than just pouring the water on top, it worked much better. That was one of the things that they changed, but these, again, were no dummies. When we look at the history of the past, we see sophistication. When we go to the city, the ancient city of Tiwanaka, the ruins of it, we see tremendous sophistication indicated. Here in this huge gateway to the sun, this is carved from one huge uh, granite boulder uh, and transported over 200 kilometers. We know we can see where they quarried it, where it came from. It was broken by an earthquake uh, about a, well, just in, in recent modern times. Uh, how did they carve this? How did they transport this from 2,000 years ago? I'm standing here on some of the ruins of one of the temples and notice the huge nature of these stones and notice the surfaces. Uh, they're not close to perfect. <laughs> They are absolutely perfect, plain, flat. You want to try to do that yourself? Uh, this, this is an amazing accomplishment. And when you look at the specifics of the construction, notice that uh, where they join these rocks there, these staples that actually had uh, depressions carved in the rock, metal poured into it, and we find the metal staples in the nearby museum. Uh, this linked the stones together in a way that would help resist the earthquakes. And uh, what just blew my mind was that this was exactly the same type of feature that we find in the temples in Cambodia. Uh, we traveled there a uh, year before last and noticed those staples or, or metals that held the stones together there uh, where the fellow is holding the, the scale and then higher up above. We look at other examples <coughs> from Cambodia. And now then we're back in Bolivia and we see the same type of construction, the mitered corners, uh, which were constructed to last for many, many years. We see great sophistication and then we see deterioration. <laughs> we see things going downhill and that's the general picture. This is, by the way, what we see in Egypt defining the devolved nature of the evidence here from Scientific American. The pyramid age had come to an end having lasted little more than a century. Pyramids were still being erected, but they rapidly became smaller and shoddier. They began uh, on the grandest scale and went downhill. That's the picture that we see in archaeology over and over again. One thing that was of great interest to me there at Tiwanaka was the tremendous range of ethnic faces that were depicted on the walls as well as in some of the figurines. There were, I think, very obvious Egyptian and Negroid and Oriental faces that we could see. Uh, we saw them in the sunken gardens, for example, there at Tiwanaka with this uh, uh, entrance gateway to the sun in the, in the background. Uh, these faces seem to be designed to depict a brotherhood of man, or at least a, a great range of ethnicity. Here the, the Negroid type is obvious, and many of them, of course, Oriental, and some strange faces that we can see here represented. Uh, some of them were, uh, I think, a very obvious Egyptian motif, as is the representation here. Uh, in some of the Acombro figurines from Mexico, we pointed out there was the Oriental uh, here, here the Mexican motif, and then uh, very obvious oriental shapes. Some of them were African. Uh, again, the, the point is they traveled around the world a long time ago. And the idea that Columbus discovered America is ridiculous. Uh, here are these African figurines from over 2,000 years ago in the Acombro collection, together with European, 
show that uh, the various groups around the world were known. Here, uh, very obvious uh, African uh, forms. And then the Oriental, uh, very characteristic Oriental. By the way, this is the cue on the back of that head that we just saw that was broken from this statue. Um, the Olmec faces are very Oriental looking. That's been pointed out for a number of years, seen in the basaltic heads. Dr. Chu of the Dallas area, Texas Christian University, has documented this from a number of sources. First, the jade that's found there with the Olmecs is found only in China. And he says this is from the Chang Dynasty. Uh, he has evidence of it that has been reported in the standard journals. Here, ABC is reporting on it. Uh, Chu discovered jade, stone, and pottery artifacts attributed to the Olmec, believed to be ancestors of the Maya. The artistic motifs on the objects bear an extraordinary resemblance to the Chinese bone inscriptions from the Chang Dynasty of about 1600 to 1100 B.C. Symbols for agriculture, astronomy, rain, religion, sacrifice, all of these were nearly identical. The, the language, the symbols, here's the ear treatment from uh, the Chang Dynasty and from the Olmecs. Uh, again, now from Discover Magazine. 3,000 years before the egg roll joined America's fast food menu, a group of Chinese immigrants may have sailed to the New World. Well, 3,000 years ago, Chinese came to America. What happened to uh, Columbus? That's uh, kind of old hat at this point. He has proof in their own handwriting, and he shows examples. Here we see the symbols for divine uh, in the Olmec, in the Chang, and then modern you know, for temple, and uh, for container, and for worship, uh, for small. Uh, it's absolutely identical for offer. Again, the language, the alphabet, is identical. This came from China some 3,000 years ago and has readily been acknowledged now. Even the Japan Times, uh, notice here from August 1999, from Beijing, uh, the evidence showing similarities between the ancient native markings in Central America and ancient Chinese characters has added fuel to the theories that Chinese arrived in America as early as 3,000 years ago, uh, as Chinese state press reported Thursday. Uh, they were not dummies. They traveled around the world long, long before Columbus arrived here. Now, we travel back to Peru, this time to Cusco, where we see amazing sophistication likewise demonstrated. Uh, down south of Lima, uh, up in the highlands, we see stones uh, that were cut with amazing sophistication. Here is a, a stone fortress. And it's not in the style that we use where there is a, a, a row upon row upon row where there is a line between the stones, which, of course, uh, the cracks follow if uh, there's a shift in the foundation. The, in this area with earthquakes, they had shifts in foundations, and so they made irregular stones cut uh, just incredibly. And this is granite. This is as hard as it gets. And the, uh, the way they cut these stones is just absolutely mind-boggling. Uh, obviously, not something that I would know how to do. And notice the stone in the center here. This has 12 different angles, and it fits into the angles of the stone around it perfectly. And when you remove the stones around it, you see even the little imperfections in one stone match the imperfections in the other. It's just an incredible match. No need for mortar. They fit perfectly and, of course, resist uh, the earthquakes. These, again, were not dummies. Notice the statement that we find from uh, Mr. Nuremberg. What's truly impossible about the block, and he's talking about the largest block that they found here, again, cut with angles all around it, is this, it is the size of a five-story house and weighs an estimated 20,000 tons. Now, this came from 200 kilometers away. We have no combination of machinery today that could dislodge such a weight, let alone move it any distance. Now, that may uh, have some uh, people that would argue, but that's, that's at least close to so. Shows their mastery of technology, certainly, which we have not attained as yet. Uh, again, 
not dummies, but the further back you go, the more sophisticated you get. Just amazing sophistication. Now, let's sum this up and raise some questions. Why is it that we see <laughs> just this uh, incredibly depressed, terribly poor area today? This, this is what's left of the incredibly sophisticated, very wealthy, prosperous society in the past. In fact, the, they really make a living off of the ancient society today. About the best living is, is grave robbing. Why is it like this, and why was it so different in the past? Well, I'd like to suggest an idea. It was because of their pornography, because of their cruelty, because of their wickedness. Now, would that cause the people, the land to become desolate? Well, I know God has done this in the past because he said so.